Hi, welcome back, Well2 family. My name is David Sidisa, and I'm here with my buddy Andres Moya and our friends here from Superheat, Randy and Chris. And today we're going to be showing you guys how to weld out the six inch nozzle, and it's going to be preheated using their Magnamat technology. Check out weldlife.com and shop all welding gear shown in this video. All right, thanks, David, for the intro. Well, true family, what we're going to do here is we're going to set this nozzle up for a preheat using our Magnamac technology. So, like before, we're going to use our thermocouples and attach them to the nozzle here onto the shell itself, and then we'll show you how everything gets set up. We're going to be applying a preheat to this shell and the nozzle. Uh, in the past, the way that we would hang heaters on a shell is shooting studs onto the shell and hanging the heaters on them. Now, in some locations, this can be very, very tedious and laborious to hang them. Uh, with our new technology, our magna mats, you're gonna see how fast it is to get this set up. So these are the magna mats. What we're just gonna do is move them into location and you'll see how they stick. So here's our magnets here. This is what will adhere to the, the metal shell. This is our ceramic heater, right? And we've got built-in insulation right on here. So when we got our setup all, all uh, queued up, all we do is is get these things lined up and they pop right into place. And there you have it. So now all we're gonna do is attach our TCs to control the shell temperature and get it hooked up and we'll be ready to go. Now to bring power to this, we've got our generated rig back here. This is superheat technology. We've got a generator with our machine attached to it. So in, uh, in a lot of different job sites, we've got real small uh, space issues. Right, so instead of bringing a generator on one trailer and a, a heat machine on another trailer, we've got all in one. You can see it's a pretty small trailer, so it fits in tight spots like we've got here. So when this thing generates power, our rig here, which has eight ports, we can run eight cables off of this machine. Each cable is capable of running three heaters. Okay, so what we have here is our smart view, which gives us access to our equipment. This is controlling our SAM, and we go directly to that, and it'll allow us to control our rig over here. When I hit on, it'll send an electronic signal and communicate to our SAM, which will then power on our GR unit. Okay, now that our GR unit has been turned on remotely, we're ready to unlock the smart pack and get this run started. All right, guys, so for the root pass, I'm gonna be using 1A7018. I'm gonna start from the bottom up, and then uh, once I'm done with this root, Andy's gonna back grind it, back gouge it, clean it up, get a good full penetration well. Here you're just trying to, you know, basically leave a little bit of a gap on your fit up. You're just trying to fill in, you know, your root pass is gonna be ground out. Andy's gonna make sure that he's got any indications dug out. You know, he's got better access with a grinder on his side. You know, a lot of you might be asking, why are we using 7018 for the first pass? You know, there's a lot of uh, pressure vessels that are made with a grade 70 plate. You know, that means that the tensile strength is 70,000 pounds. And they're not going to let you put a 6010 electrode on it. That would basically be a downgrade in strength. Some of these procedures like this, you just got to, it's not the easiest thing to do, trying to put this first pass. All right, so I already put my first pass in. I'm gonna turn it over to Andy, let him back grind, get it ready for the full pen weld. All right, my buddy just finished the first pass on the other side, so now I'm gonna have to grind out, make sure it gets down flush and nice, clean and even, and then I, I can start throwing down my pass. All right, so the root was put in from the other side. As you can see, Andy already grinded everything to where we've got good, clean metal. You know, this is a very important step. We want to make sure that everything's super clean. That way you have a clean, full penetration weld. This is a double V groove. And Andy's going to go ahead and start putting his fill passes in here. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. All right, I just got done grinding it all out. It's nice and clean now. I'm going to get ready to start putting my first pass. I'm going to put my first pass 332. It's kind of deep in there. And I'm running at 100 amps. As, my, as I work my way up here on my fills, you know, I'm just doing a small weave technique, just making sure my puddle ties into my be the bevel on my plate and the nozzle. Oh, 
jumped up to one eighth rod, moved my amps up to 120. All right guys, so getting ready to cap it up here. We're gonna do a three bead cap. I'm still using one eighth at 130 amps. And just starting from the bottom up. So here I'm just gonna be stringering this cap. Just trying to keep my puddle nice and even. Just work my way up. It's a little easier said than done with all this stuff around me. You just gotta find a spot where you, know, you can kind of reach in there. If it gets too uncomfortable, just go ahead and stop and you know readjust, reposition yourself. Yeah, you're trying to keep that metal up. What I was explaining when I was welding is when I'm welding, uh, I guess horizontal, I'll hold my rod up like two seconds or whatever you you feel comfortable with, and like a quick sweep down, and then two seconds sweep down, two seconds sweep down. If you go like one one thousand, one one thousand, it's gonna sag with that gravity. So you gotta push more up to the top. And then once I come up to the side, that's when I'm like one one thousand, one one thousand, one one thousand, one one thousand. Just depending on what the puddle's doing. Now if I could sit there a little bit longer, then I'll fill. If it's it looks like if it's one and it dropped, then I'll kind of speed up, but I'll keep that same rhythm. And once I start coming to that curve. And I'll start again towards the top, sweep down, towards the top, sweep down. Oh yeah. On the bottom, coming up, we call that dead man's curve. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's where it wants to just blah. Oh yeah. All right guys, so going into my third bead here, this is gonna be the final one on the outside of the plate. You know, I just wanna make sure I cover, cover up that bevel edge and not undercut the plate itself. Try to keep it nice, clean, and consistent, and keep a nice, even overlap on the beads. All right, I'm gonna do my uh, third and final bead on this cap. See if I can leave it quick. All right, guys, so we're finished up with this nozzle weld. I'm going to go ahead and have the superheat guys take down all their equipment so we can finish it up. All right, guys, we just finished up here. Uh, David and Andreas got this thing uh, welded out. Um, you can see with our Magnamat technology, you can see how fast we were able to, to strip this thing out and, uh, and get the site cleaned up. All right, there you have it. We showed you a full penetration nozzle weld, me and Andy brother in law it. Andy was on the inside of the vessel. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one.